Hello, everybody. Welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today is Friday. It's Friday. It's March the 8th. It's the 8th, right? It is. 2019. Welcome in, everybody. And we're finishing up with uh, Franklin's computer build. As you may or may not be aware, we ran into a few obstacles regarding the cooler overlapping the RAM, the size of the RAM because of the RGB, then preventing a liquid cooler from going in, or even uh, the Scythe Mugen 5 would barely fit. So we replaced the four sticks of RGB RAM with normal RAM, two sticks of 16 gigs each instead of four sticks of eight. And we've installed the Kraken uh, X62 on here and um, we had a little issue with the USB connector because the USB connector plugs into the water block on the X62 and then it hits the fan blades because Fantex did a terrible job in designing this case and I cannot recommend this case. Fantex does make good cases but this end through is about one inch too short between the top of the case and the top of the motherboard you know, you can even see the fan, how it sort of overlaps with the cooler here, with the radiator on the cooler. The engineers did a really bad job, or the, the managers in charge of the engineers should be made aware or be forced to have to build a computer in the case that they approved before selling it to anybody. And, and so for me right now, I'm pretty upset with Fantex because in the past, they've impressed me. Unfortunately, they're not consistent. They make good cases and they make not so good cases. They're all built out of good quality material and they're packed well. However, um, whatever's going on here, whatever this design is, I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. I don't like this removable thing here and the fact that the hard drive cage moves over for the radiator. I just think it was poorly engineered and they have better cases than this one. So if I was you and I was looking to build with a Fantex case, I can't tell you which Fantex case I would build with, but I'll tell you it won't be with an in through ATX. That much I can assure you. It's far too restrictive for the size. I expect a case of this size to uh, accommodate whatever cooler I want to put in there, and especially a liquid cooler at the top. If they were intending for that to happen, uh, they need to raise this case another inch and most of my complaints I could live with, except that one. That is unacceptable. So be aware of that if you want to order that case because you think it looks really good, uh, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm not building it. Cheers, everybody. Here's a Coke to you. Little ASMR for people into that. Good to see everybody. Welcome in. Welcome in. Got a couple contributions already. Thanks, you guys. Let's give a shout out to those who've contributed. What do we have going on here? Um, Tony Wallow has contributed a dollar and ninety nine. I think Tony. I think you sent me some uh, thermal compound too, didn't you? You're the only. <laughs> had to be Tony. I, I. I don't think I ordered it. My box of Girl Scout cookies arrived today in their Tagalongs. And so I looked at my order and I did order Thin Mints and I mentioned I don't like the Tagalongs. So I emailed the, the seller and I go, look, you just mailed me a case of what I didn't order and I don't like these. And uh, by the way, your product condition says it's from 2017, but these are fresh. They don't expire till September of 2019. I mean, this guy, this seller has screwed up six ways to Sunday. The seller says I got really busy and I had a friend helping me pack my orders. So if you want to give them away to somebody or I can send you a prepaid shipping label and send them back. And I said, yeah, send me the prepaid shipping label. I don't want to take something from a charity. I'll send it back to you. You can resell them again. But it's like $30 to ship those things each way. So the only people making money on this deal is the post office. But uh, what, a, what a massive uh, issue. Anyway, uh, so thank you to Tony for your contribution. Uh, let's see, we've got a contribution here from Rick Hubbard, contributed 10 pounds. Hey, thank you, Rick. And Nikolai Lukanov has contributed uh, 50 MX. That's Mexican peso, 50 MX. Um, let's see, 50 MX to USD. What is that? $2.57. That is Mexican pesos. Hey, thank you for the contribution. 
You know, I, I wish I got a dollar from everybody watching. That'd be 300 bucks <laughs> right now. We have 306 people watching, so no contributions too small. Thank you, Nikolai. He says, greetings. I really like your channel. Thank you, Nikolai. I appreciate that. Thomas Beckenstow has contributed $5, and thank you to Thomas. And, um, yeah, yeah. So the USB cable, when it plugs into this pump, it hits the bottom of the fan because of this really bad case design. And uh, I had to go on Amazon and I ordered a little extension cable that has a right angle on it. So that will plug into the pump without hitting the fan. And then we can run this part of it out through the back of the case and plug the original cable into there and then on to the motherboard. See how I solved that problem? But you guys don't have to be afraid about you know having problems when you build. It's, it, so it takes a few more days. I think I started this build for Franklin February 12th, I think. And we're almost to March 12th. This is not a process, especially if you're filming. This is not a process that is a race or a competition. And in between waiting for parts, I'm fixing other computers, building other computers. I think I've posted 14 videos while I've been building this computer in that span of time. Oh, it's more than 14. I think it's 28 videos I've posted in that time. So it's not like I'm sitting around with nothing to do and I'm just taking my time and twiddling my thumbs and you're like, gee, Carrie, it takes you a long time. Yeah, well, when parts aren't right and parts don't fit, we've got to talk to the customer. There's a delay in email when I send it, when they read it, when they respond, when I read it. All this stuff takes time. If you're looking for a computer in a hurry, go buy a pre-built or build it yourself. If you want it done right and you want a computer that's going to last you for years and years and years, and you want me to build it and have a video that'll be available forever for you to watch, you've got to pick two of those things. You don't get to pick just, you don't get all of it. All right, uh, a couple other contributions. Let's give a couple shouts out here. Uh, Ann Ortega contributed $4.99. Says, love your channel, very helpful. Jim Desposito has, Posito has contributed $5. He says, here's $5 from me. Thank you, Jim. And Sterling has contributed $2. Cheers, guys, cheers. Thank you. Okay. I think I can get back to work now. So this little cable is like $10, but I needed it and I wasn't in the, whether it was $6 or $10, I don't care, I just need it. You know, it was reasonable and Amazon shipped it. I think I had it within two days of when I ordered it and that's gonna go right up here. It should fit right in there. See, now we're not going to intersect with the fan. If I can give you a little zoom in on that. Uh, let's see, let's lower the camera. Let's get you, if it gets you a lower angle. You see how close that gets to the top of the fan? But we're clear. There's actually more space there than it, than it appears to be. I can get my whole finger between the fan and the top of that USB cable. Then I can take this USB cable and I can just route it. Uh, I can route it up around the heat sink and then out through the back of the case. Back through here, we turn the case around. And I should be able to pull it in somewhere through this wiring grommet. Let's get you a little backed up there. Somewhere in this wiring grommet, I think, with the heat sink installed, it's a little bit difficult for me to see where I'm going. That's the cable right there. And I can just pull that. That's all I need right there. Then I can grab the cable that came with the water block that they intended me to use, intended for me to use, I should say. And like I say, that, that's just, this piece is too long, it hits the fan, but now I can plug it in right here. 
And now we can take that and run it properly. Let's get it behind these cables. And that's going to go onto any of the USB 2.0 headers on this board. And they're right where my fingers are. So I'll just bring that right up in here. It can only go on one way. And where's the missing pin? Missing pin is in the top left, it looks like. And then we'll just pull that slack back through so we can't see it. Problem solved. <laughs> All right, hang in there, guys. Let's go for a little ride. Gotcha. Zoom out. Ben Laird's contributed a pound. Hey, thank you to Ben. Appreciate that very much. I can move this out of the way. I use this to stop the Lazy Susan from spinning when I'm working on it. I want to mention, uh, when I was doing my live presentation yesterday, I got a really good question from an audience member that mentioned that they were looking at some how-to videos on YouTube and they saw some, they went looking at things they already knew how to do just to sort of check and see if the information was accurate. That's a really offensive thing to do to somebody. Um, if, I don't think most YouTube creators are intentionally making videos that are inaccurate or not clear or phrased properly or too slow or too fast, they went through the effort of turning on a camera and sharing their knowledge with the best of intentions. And most of the people who have anything to complain have never done that. And that's really something people should be embarrassed about. If you're somebody who writes comments on YouTube videos about the person did it wrong, the person doesn't, didn't present well, the person didn't speak clearly, the audio quality is not good, the video, whatever your complaint is, at least they did something, you know? And you should make a video rather than complain. If you don't like it and you th say it's wrong, I think you should make a video. You have a cell phone with a camera. You have all the tools you need to do it. And experience what that feels like because you think you nailed it and there will be people that will attack you. And you'll say, well, who are these people that are attacking me? Because I know what I did is right. And you probably will never want to post another video again. But what I hope you take from that is that you won't leave comments like that on other people's videos, that you'll say to yourself, hey, at least they got off their butt and they made a video, and at least their intentions were in the right place. That's it. Um, when you're paying for something, if you go to a website and you're paying for an education, if you go to a college and you're paying for an education, and you feel like you know more than the teacher, you should definitely complain to the school administration about that because you're a paying customer. People on YouTube getting videos for free seem to justify their uh, subscription as being valuable. And it's weird to me because if you understood just how little YouTube pays, you couldn't even cover the cost of your cell phone. If you make a video right now, you won't cover the cost of your cell phone, let alone the editing software you use or any of that other from people subscribing to you. Um, chances are it'll take you somewhere between and if you have just that one video, it, you probably will never, ever see enough money from YouTube to cover the cost of your cell phone. If you leave that video up for 10 years, you have to make more videos. And the more videos you make, the more you'll be attacked by people who never made any videos. And then you've got to ask yourself, does doing this make any sense? Is it worth it to me to go through this time and effort and be attacked by random strangers on the Internet saying they could do it better when they have never done it? They have no videos. Chances are you're going to say it's not worth it. So why would you do that to somebody else? It's just food for thought. 
you know? Someone did the best they could, and if that's not good enough for you, ask for a refund. But to insult them, you know what? You show them how to do it. If you're not willing to show them how to do it by putting your own video up there, and trust me, I don't care how perfect your video is, somebody, many, many people are going to attack you. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you make yourself a human punching bag? <laughs> Why do I do it to myself? Uh, Irish Bug is contributing five pounds. He says, thank you, Carrie, for the awesome info. Hey, thank you. Um, Skater Man's contributed five dollars. Thank you, Skater Man. Harry Baldwin's contributed a dollar ninety-nine. He says, I always enjoy watching these live streams. Now I know I'm sort of preaching to the choir here on the live stream because we have 508 people watching, and I know you you guys, you're not like that, you know. You're, you're members of this amazing community where we support one another. And it's such a rare thing to find on YouTube. But after this live video is over, it'll be available to watch and, and thousands of people will watch it later. And that's intended for them. So I don't want you to think I'm talking to you unless you're the kind of person who does that. I'm not saying you are because I'm talking to one camera that's appearing on thousands and thousands of monitors around the world. And it's up to you to decide if that fits you or not. And really think about if you wouldn't want it done to you, and if you're not willing to put yourself out there, then what are you doing? Why would you take something for free and then complain about the quality of it? I just, I can't get on board with that. But if you wanna make a video, and you wanna put yourself out there, and then you receive those attacks, if that doesn't convince you to stop, attacking others, I don't know what will. I mean, you just lack empathy. But uh, empathy is real easy to be taught. I'll just grab you and pinch you and twist it real hard and say, did you like that? Well, then don't do that to other people. It's really easy to learn empathy. It's super easy. John Yasuda has contributed $5. He says, money for some hot pizza and a Coke on me. Right on, John. John's graphics card just arrived. You want a sneak peek? Want a sneak peek of what's, what, what we're building for John? I'm going to show you a little sneak peek. I'm going to hide it. i got to hide it. No, oh, can't see. No, oh, oh, oh. You saw a graphics card, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Did I pique your interest? Yeah, so we're going to be building with one of these uh, expensive things. Don't drop this on the floor. Man, if I drop this on the floor, John will not be happy. So that'll be coming up uh, very soon, next week. Next week, another build. <laughs> People are sticking dollars in that box. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what do we have going on. Strandberg Tomas contributed 20 Swedish kroner. Thank you, Strandberg. John Rogers says, I may put a like on some videos, but I'll never put a dislike. Just don't watch it again. Again, uh, y y sometimes you're helping a video when you dislike it. Uh, the, the search engine optimization likes videos that are controversial. So if you have a 100% thumbs up and zero thumbs down, the, the, the search engine kind of finds that suspicious. So thumbs down are actually quite healthy for a video. It, it would sort of be like if you're a human being who never got sick, and then you went into a community, like your whole life you lived in this community like where you had this herd uh, immunity, if you will, because nobody got sick, so you didn't get sick. And you lived in a bubble, so germs couldn't get in or out. And you leave your bubble, and you encounter somebody with a common cold, it could kill you because you have no immune system. And in the same way, uh, those thumbs down don't affect the income that the content creator makes. What a thumbs down and what subscribers do is they give a YouTube channel more value to potential sponsors. That's it. That's all they do. The actual content creator, as far as getting paid from YouTube goes, 
only gets paid based on how many minutes of the video you watched. Even if you clicked on the video for a second with the full intent to go, I don't like this guy, I don't want to, I, I, I don't even care what he's got to say, I just don't like it. I already know I'm not going to like it, so I'm just going to click on the video and send my message. What you did is you just paid that guy for the few seconds that you watched. And if enough people do that, that's some lesson you're sending. <laughs> you're just taking it right to the bank. Now, if somebody has got a lot of sponsors, that's when you can affect their ability to get sponsors by boycotting those sponsors or saying things like, uh, you, you know, if you're going to associate your business with this person, we're not going to do business with you. And, and then that person then has to adjust. Uh, that's what happened with, you know, Presumably, that's what happened with that whole Verge build was, I think it was sponsored by Capital One. And initially, the editor of the Verge said, I'm not taking this down. I'm proud of the work my guy did, and you guys don't know what it's like to be a journalist. I mean, just a really obtuse, uh, had no idea what he's talking about, defending his, the person who made the video who didn't know what they were talking about. But eventually, uh, I mean, this thing just kind of blew up over the, over the web, and I'm pretty sure... Capital One got involved where they said, we don't want to be involved in this video, and we may not want to be involved in any more because you're making us look like we're condoning this. And it's clearly um, uh, getting a negative reaction, and that's not good for our business image. And I think that, I believe that is what happened that caused the editor to take a step back and pull the video down. So when you're like me, where my sponsors are you guys, if all you guys up and left, uh, it would significantly affect my YouTube revenue, but I still love what I'm doing and I would still make videos even to just, just share with my family. I just wouldn't make as many or as often. So, you know, in that way I'm immune. That's one of the good things about not having any sponsors. But if I do take sponsors, I'll be very selective over who I'll take because they've got to be somebody that I feel makes a good quality product that I use myself and that is sold at a reasonable price, it's good value. I don't ever want to just take money. I, I, there's enough people like that and I don't, I don't want to be like everybody else. <laughs> no problem there, Carrie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Franklin's joining us. Hey, Franklin. Let's say hello to some friends in the chat. Frank Lauren, he says, I built three computers because of you, Carrie. That is awesome, Frank. I, that never gets old. I love hearing from you guys. If you've built a computer, fixed a computer, or upgraded your computer, following my videos, inspired by my videos, please tell me because that's like heroin to me. And I'm an addict. Well, not a heroin addict. I'm a Coke addict. Well, not a Coke addict. I'm a Coca-Cola addict. And not so much an addict. Never mind. Joseph Panariello has contributed $2. Thank you, Joseph. I got an email from um, the folks that film. Remember that little Italian grandmother that cooks with her hands? She makes the most amazing, amazing Italian food on her YouTube channel called Bon Appetiti because her last name's Petiti. It's clever. And I said, you know, I got this old wireless microphone. I don't want it anymore, and I think it would help you. And her, uh, I think it's her son-in-law, films her. And I sent it to them. He, he told me he got it. And in the next, oh, he also got a new camera. He got himself a little Sony, like a handheld digital camera that, you know, that you take pictures with. A lot of people use those for, uh, for filming vlogs, and so that's what he's going to use. So he's got a new camera, and he's going to use the new mic I sent him. And so the next video they publish will be with the new camera and mic, and I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see what she's cooking, and hopefully we'll be able to see it in 4K and hear it very, very clearly. So that microphone is now on its third life because I couldn't afford to buy that microphone new. That's a $600 microphone, and I bought it used, and I think it was a church that used it. They sold it for like $350, and I used it until I got the Sennheiser. And then, because the popularity of the channel is growing, I will tell you guys, I just dropped 
$2,500 on a new Canon XF400 camera. So just as when I figured out how to set all this video and audio so it's good on this Canon G40, <laughs> I got to start all over again. Unfortunately, I don't believe this Elgato capture card will capture at 4K. I'm sorry, this Magewell capture card. But I think an Elgato capture card will work simultaneously and I can buy a $200 Elgato PCI Express internal 4K capture card with one input, keep my Magewell with the four inputs, and then I'll have five inputs. I'm sick, I need help. <laughs> I can't get enough. And then you're gonna have to look at me in 4K. But I'm not gonna do the 60 frames a second anymore. I received several emails from people who don't have the bandwidth or the computing power to watch the video with 60 frames a second. And unfortunately, YouTube doesn't offer HD at 30 frames a second when you film it at 60. If you choose 720 or 1080 as your resolution and I released it at 60 frames a second, the only way you can go back down to 30 is to drop it at 480 resolution. And that sucks for those people. So out of consideration for them, I won't shoot at 60 frames per second anymore. But at least when I shoot at 4K, you can use the drop down and go to whatever resolution, whatever highest resolution your bandwidth in your computer can handle. Because I want you to see the videos as clearly as possible. Niles Van de Sand says, that was a good presentation yesterday. Thank you, Niles. It was, uh, <laughs> my favorite part was the cell phone bit. I just, that just went perfectly, perfectly well. I think I'll make a short little video, just a little, you know, carry on smartphones quick tip. Josiah Guernsey has contributed $5. He says, thank you for the videos. And let's say hello to David Rivera, Lurch a Kiss, Stephen Bernstein, Dusan Packler, Wim VDK, Paul Newman, John Paul Bacon, Al Haj Tepej, Jimmy Bateman, Chuck Wolf. I'll say hello to Eric Nelson and Bob Wilson, Steve Sabaha, Maruf, Steve Devine, Paul Newman, Skater Man. Skater Man, let's turn you into a moderator. Polster 69, Mike Paradin, Philip Drake. Reverend John O'Toole, Franklin Adams, Michael M. Franklin is the one who owns this machine. So if you guys want to ask Franklin about what he's using it for or, or how, how much of his nails are left biting at his nails, waiting for me to finish and send this to him. We're almost done. We're going to get it done today, Franklin. You watch. You'll see. Again, hello to Jim Desposito and Ben DeCour. Ben contributed $4.99. Thank you, Ben. Hello to Zach and Tony Macri. Don Walters, Heavy Sonic, Jeffrey, Paul, Hack, Michael Nielsen, Nighthawk, Eddie Milne, Donnie Seeger, Christoph Esch in Germany, Mark Baggett, Z Hammer 223, Matthew Zoldos, Frank Lauren, John Craig, Damelin 77, Vagalos Carasiotis, Dark Rider 6970, Martin Postema, Steve Sabaha, I think I said that already, Richard Bogan, Dark Rider 6970, Jason Wyrick, Jamie Williams, David Tracy, Lost Time, Four Letters, that's his name, Four Letters, it says I just subbed. Thank you, four letters. I wish I got money for that. Jesse Kirk. Lettered Garrett Zeno Siphon. Christopher Simons. Kelly McGee. Mick Ridgely. Riley Turner. Al Perez. Tony Camarina. Camarina. Camar Camarina. The Skip Rat. Perry Dubs. Char X Gaming. Stephen St. Germain. Franklin Burkett. Pete Unwin. Catherine Anna Hauserman is in the house. That's probably why her last name's in the Hauserman. <laughs> I don't care if you don't think that's funny. I crack myself up. Big Teddy Bear. Jan Giddings. 
Jaguar won. See what happens when you participate in the chat? You often will get a shout out. People seem to like that. And 55 Stang Dude. Let's make you a moderator because I... It's just a matter of time before I recognize you, you know? You guys, if you're part of the community, one of the major parts of being a part of this community is having some patience. Um, not ridiculous amounts of patience, but if you're part of the community, it's just a matter of time before I recognize you and turn you blue. I want everybody blue in here. I do. But it's up to you. Like, if you were... If, if, if something goes crazy and, and uh, you're spamming and, and, and then you turn around and you go, hey, it wasn't me, well, you're not moderator level status yet. You know, oh, my account got hacked. Well, then I can't trust you. If you, well, I fixed it, won't happen again. Well, let's, let's just give that some time and be sure that it doesn't happen again. Because moderator status is, a, is something that's earned. It can be taken away. And I expect you, all my mods, to represent the community. I expect you to be respectful and supportive at all times. And, you know, if somebody's mod status gets removed, it doesn't mean it's removed forever. If you continue to come back and be supportive and kind, again, with time, I, I'm happy to turn you blue. I want the whole room to be blue. So um, be patient. Jimmy D and Greg20711 and Patrick Manny, Peter Brooks, Arbiter6452, Lebcar24, and I see Sharon Idol has joined us as well as Paul Howe and Andrew Dufault. And the cockpit says hello. There's a problem in the cockpit. In the cockpit, what is it? It's a little place where the pilots sit, but that's not important right now. All right. Franklin's like, you're killing me over here, Carrie. You're killing me. Carrie, you're killing me. Get it done, Carrie. Get it done. All right, Franklin. He's not actually saying that, but if I was Franklin, that's what I would be saying. I got a little dust up here. I want to wipe it down. When you wipe down the uh, computers, just use a, I use a washcloth. I get these at the Target department store. I get like 10 of them for $4. I mean, they're just, if they start to, sh to shed, just throw them in the garbage. It's more economical and ecological than paper towels. It doesn't leave any anything behind. Make sure the computer is unplugged. Too many people confuse being grounded with being um, safe from electrostatic discharge. And it's a real unfortunate thing that's rife on the internet. There's so much confusion over the difference between grounding yourself and uh, being on the same electrical level as the items you're working on. When you're on the same electrical level, you don't have to worry about electrostatic discharge. And so you do that by just touching the case from time to time. Or, and, and or holding the parts by the edges, like you'll always see me handle the parts. And if you don't trust yourself, you can certainly buy an electrostatic strap. But there's a reason why the end of the electrostatic strap doesn't plug into the wall. Like these people will tell you on the internet, make sure the computer is plugged in and turned off, and then attach your electrostatic strap strap to the case and they'll say to use a non-painted part of the case. There's no non-painted part of most cases. So as long as you're on something metal, you're going to be fine. But the fact that you're plugged in means that if there's an electrical short, it'll go right through you, right into the wall, and you could die. And it's not likely to happen. Uh, and it's more likely to happen if you're opening up a power supply, you're getting into where you're not supposed to get in. But there's no harm in just <laughs> leaving it unplugged. Then the possibility is zero. Instead of unlikely, it's just not possible. And that's why that anti-static strap, and I can't stress this enough, doesn't plug into the wall. They don't want you plugged into the wall. That's incredibly dangerous. So if the computer's plugged into the wall and your anti-static strap is connected to the computer, you're still plugged into the wall. But the power's off. Okay, but the power's off. So you reach over here and you touch something, you've got a loose wire somewhere, and you, you're still attached to your static strap, and you go over here and you move the toaster, and, and it goes right through the static strap into the ground, and it never breaks. Well, the, 
an electrostatic strap should have a resistor that'll break the connection. I will give you that. That's what's supposed to happen. But uh, if you were, for example, not grounded when you touched that hot wire, you'd let it go. But as long as the wire has a path, what happens in the human body is your muscles typically clench and you can't let it go. And you're just stuck until you, I mean, it's, you should never have to experience that. So safety first, like I said, just because it never happened to you doesn't mean it can't happen to you. And I want to see you guys be safe and be, you know, be careful of what is you know, dangerous information out there online. Um, anybody with a degree in electrical engineering will explain this to you. Um, if they have a real degree in electrical engineering, they can explain it to you better than I can, but uh, that's how it works. You want to ask me how I know? <laughs> let's just say, let's just say I wasn't born with this knowledge, and a lot of it comes from experience and blowing a few circuit breakers. Thank goodness for circuit breakers. That's all I gotta say. because I'd be dead. If it wasn't for circuit breakers, I would have died long, long time ago when I first started in this career. I made a few mistakes. I've, I've had my share. It's been no bed of roses, and I thank you all. <laughs> it's no pleasure cruise. I consider it a challenge before all of the human race and I ain't gonna lose. That's good, I should write that down. Baron says, that's shocking, Carrie. Yeah, it's definitely shocking. Happy Women's Day to all the ladies. Isn't every day Women's Day? It should be. I think I'll put my Coke over here so I don't have to walk so far. You just get to look at the side of my face. Aren't you lucky? Okay, so the radiator's installed. Uh, we've got this, uh, this right here goes on the CPU fan header on the board. And the reason it goes on there is primarily just to send a signal to the motherboard that the fan is running. A lot of motherboards, if, if you've plugged your CPU fan header into the wrong place, the board will turn on and then shut off to protect itself. Now, you can plug this into one of two places. We can plug it into CPU fan. There's a header that's labeled CPU fan. It's usually a different color. We could also plug it into a fan header that just says AIO pump. It stands for all-in-one pump. But the pump's gonna be actually powered by the power supply. It's never gonna use this. And the difference is an all-in-one pump motor, I think uh, the, the fan header never varies. It's always one voltage and it stays running full speed at all times. And because we don't need that, we'll just plug this right on the CPU fan header. And that way our motherboard won't say, no CPU fan detected and shut down. So one of the problems I've got is the CPU fan header is way, way back up in here. So I'm gonna have to get a flashlight to see that. And of course, there's no way I can film it now without taking the radiator back out, which I don't want to do. So we'll just uh, reach up in here and get it sorted. This will go on the list of things I should have done before I secured the radiator in place. It's not a big deal to take it back out, but I just I think I can handle it pretty quickly. And I need my little doohickey here, my doorstop to keep the 
Lazy Susan from spinning on me. Sorry, you're gonna have to look at my back for a second. Huh, that's a tight fit. So one of my friends in the chat room mailed me these forceps and I said, what am I ever going to use these for? I've been doing this for 27 years and never needed forceps. This will be the fourth or fifth time I've used them. I've had customers that say, uh, well, not anymore, but they used to say they didn't have broadband, that they were still using dial-up for internet access because they don't use the internet for much. And I said, you don't use the internet for much because you have dial-up. It'd be like saying, I don't own a car because I don't go anywhere. And I would say, you don't go anywhere because you don't have a car. So I said, well, what do I need forceps for? I have never needed forceps, never had them before. Now that I've got them, I'm finding I, I use them quite a bit. So <laughs> there you go. Ignorance is bliss. You can't miss what you've never had. By the way, if Fantex would have just raised this case up another inch, this is another problem I wouldn't be dealing with right now. All right, this ain't gonna happen. I've gotta pull the, I gotta slide that radiator back out. I, I didn't want to, but it only take me a second. Heck, I've already done it four times, so what's another time? What's one more time? One to say goodbye, you know? see it. You know, while I'm back here, I'm going to put a little zip tie on that. I better do it now. That's all I'm saying. Or it's going to come out again. <laughs> So if you think looking at my back stinks because I don't have a cameraman here, you should have been around the arcades in the 1980s when 20 people crowded around a machine to watch the guy play. And I'm like, so at least you're not doing that. I do try and show as much as I can. 
sometimes when you get into a real dark corner of the case, there's not much else I can do but just try and get it done quickly and move on. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Later on, if I ever find somebody who's willing to operate a camera for what YouTube pays, uh, we'll get there. We will get there in time. First, I got to have the camera. So I got that coming. Uh, thank you to Jan Giddings for contributing four pounds 99 said Walker's crisps are on the way. Oh, you know, I ordered some Walker's crisps that are from Amazon like last week uh, when I ordered the Girl Scout Thin Mints I ordered a, but don't worry, you can send me an entire case. <laughs> Those I'll eat and I still have to slow myself down or I'll eat them all in one day, no matter how many they are. Thank you. Matt92 Machine contributed $1.99. He says, Happy Friday. Have a Coke on me. And John Craig contributed five pounds. He said, Yesterday was the second computer club presentation of yours I've seen. They seem very, they seem to ask very similar questions. And by the way, stop calling me Shirley. Ah, we're back to the, uh, there's a problem in the cockpit. The cockpit, what is it? It's a little room where the pilot sits, but that's not important right now. Well, surely you must understand. I do understand, but please don't call me Shirley. That's the movie Airplane, if you like that kind of humor and you're a young one and you don't know what we're talking about. In fact, in yesterday's presentation, presentation when I talked about cell phones and I ended it with, uh, you try telling the kids of today that and they won't believe you. Nobody got that reference, but it's from a skit from Monty Python called The Four Yorkshiremen. Check that out. Richard Bogan is a uh, generously contributed $20. Thank you, Richard. And Sharon Idols contributed five pounds. She says, I'm feeling generous. Here's sponsorship for a fraction of tonight's Coke supply. <laughs> thank you. And Josiah Guernsey's contributed $5. Says, thank you for the video. And Jim Desposito says, I'm not going anywhere. Nice. Thank you, guys. Uh, Paul Eady just contributed four pounds 99 and says, loving the streams. And the streams love you. Thank you. Seriously, thanks for supporting the channel. Maybe I'll get another one of those $2,500 cameras. Let me get the first one first, and then, then I can get four more, and they'll all match. Can you imagine $10,000 worth of just cameras? Forget about the batteries, the memory cards, the tripods, the tripod. Well, thankfully, I've got all that other stuff. The cameras use the current batteries I have, so thank goodness. All right. See what we got going on. I want to clean that. It's bugging me. When you want to shine something up, whether it's your car, and you don't want to scratch the paint, you want a microfiber cloth. Your big screen TV, how do you clean your big screen TV? Take a little corner of this microfiber cloth and run it under the sink and make it wet and squish it out. Rinse it out, not rinse it out, but wring it out, and then get the TV wiped down and then use the dry part and dry it. Don't use any solvents or cleaners, Windex, nothing with alcohol in it. And so here, this is a nice shiny surface. And we just shine that up. Let's take a look here. What's up, Jimmy Jimmy? Would seeing that box of cheese be a uh, product placement? Oh, 
I got a box that just arrived, so bear with me here for a minute to see what something, something big. I don't know what this is. Oh, okay. These are two more of those Dell Optiplex 7010s to do for future giveaways. I was wondering when those were going to show up. Apparently they showed up today. There we go. Whew. It's tough to get work done around here, huh? More tagalongs. Oh, I hope not. John Craig is telling everybody to uh, please remember to hit that like button. That's that little thumbs up down there. You give it a little clicky clicky. And even if you're not blue, you'll turn that blue, and that's a good way to start. I need a Coke delivery in those big water delivery bottles. That would go flat. I see Frederick Lundholm has joined us. Hi, Frederick. Always good to see you in the chat, my friend. So... What else do we have to do? We've got the front port switches hooked up already. We just hooked the USB port up for the water block here for the NZXT Kraken. The front port audio and the USB 3 are already hooked up. Is that all I've been waiting on to test fire this bad boy? Are we already at the test fire stage? Did it happen that quickly? Franklin's like, what do you mean quickly? What are you talking about? I've been waiting since last month. All right, um, I guess this has to be plugged in somewhere. What does this say? To motherboard CPU fan. Oh, I don't think so. I'm not doing that. You've got to be crazy. That's just, that's just a really stupid piece of advice coming from the engineers at Fantex. So if you're taking notes, case is too short for a liquid cooler to properly install and suggesting you plug this onto your CPU fan and use a stupid circuit to split your fans instead of allowing an intelligent motherboard to accurately control each fan independently is so 1997. Fantex needs to um, seriously revisit. I, I think Fantex may be made by a gamer, you know, somebody who really doesn't understand engineering and doesn't really, you know, that somebody who thinks you, if you add more fans, it's better. The number of fans that this case can hold, I mean, let's count how many we've got now. We've got two up in the front, we've got one in the rear, we've got one on the power supply, and we've got two on the radiator. Where else could we add another fan? You could put one more up in the front, 
maybe it's going to hit these cables, so there's really not room, honestly, for another fan. It's certainly not going to benefit you. That's it. And how many fan hitters do we have on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's at least seven fan headers on the board. And then the fan controller back here has six more. Yeah, Fantex could have taken this off and used the money they saved to make the case an inch taller. Two birds, one stone, right? Very, very disappointed. But be that as it may, I still have to plug this in so that the two front fans, that's what these two, the two front fans here, and what's this third one? Where's that one going? I see three fans plugged in. Oh, the rear case fan. So the three fans that come with the case are installed on the header, uh, the splitter, and they give you three additional for you to add, which you should not need. If you're putting a $20 motherboard into a $100 case, I don't understand you. So your motherboard should be of the same uh, uh, what's the word? Caliber as your case. Why do you think it's taking so long to do the Xenos build? I have to get a very, very expensive motherboard, expensive RAM, expensive, you know, it'd be like if I bought a, a Lamborghini, but I just wanted to put the seats from a 1970 AMC Gremlin in it. Why would you do that? The seats should be nice and leather and comfortable and adjustable and electric and have memory and massagers, right? If you're putting it in a Ferrari, that's all I'm saying. I think some of these people put hubcaps on their lawnmower. Not just any hubcaps, they probably put spinners. They probably put $500 hubcaps on their $75 lawnmower. I stole that joke from Tim Allen. I gotta be honest. And if I'm honest, Tim Allen's name is not really Tim Allen. Tim Allen's name in real life is Tim Dick. That's his name. That's his honest to goodness name. Just saying. So he's not really being honest, is he? <laughs> so that makes it okay for me. <laughs> Crack myself up. It's true. It's all true. Google it. All right, let's put the power supply in the off position. We'll plug that in. We'll bring that down, plug it in here. Keyboard and mouse. Inside of the mouse is a little place to hold your Wi-Fi dongle so you don't lose it. So that's how you always put it away for next time. And we'll plug it up here where the USB 3 front port header is and that'll test that header. You know, make sure it works. Why not? Got to plug it in somewhere. Benjamin Stroud has contributed $5. Thank you, Benjamin. Nighthawk has contributed a dollar. Thank you to Nighthawk as well for your support and contributions, as well as uh, Greb Vibe Dance to My Beat contributed five euro. Thank you to Greb Vibe. I think I got everybody. Did I, did I miss anybody? Let's hope not. <clears throat> So if we take a closer look, uh, let's see, before we power this on, let's take a closer look at what we've got. We'll zoom it in, let's lower the camera back down.
And that's what the build looks like so far. Franklin said, sorry, Carrie, I bought that case because it met certain requirements related to my disability. Okay, but didn't need to add to my disability. <laughs> it's all right, Franklin. I'm not, I'm not, it's nothing to do with you, Franklin. It has to do with Fantex. Honestly, Franklin, if you'd have said, would you recommend this case? I would have said, oh, it's Fantex, it'll be fine. I wouldn't even have thought to look up that specific model because with the Fantex cases I've worked on, they've all been excellent. This is really shocking to me. I wouldn't expect this from Fantex, so even if you would asked, I still would have said, yeah, it'll be fine. And ultimately, it's gonna work. It, it just, they didn't make it as, easily, as easy as they could have, and I don't know why. So let's just back this off a little bit more. All right. So here's the thing, I don't have a monitor to test this with. We've got 815 people watching, and if each one of you is watching on at least one monitor, then I can hook this up to 815 monitors right now. Would you mind if I borrowed your monitor? Because um, I don't have one. I don't have a spare one, so just, if you don't mind, I, I just want to borrow yours for a minute. Is that okay? okay. Is that okay? Because if, if not, you can turn your monitor off. So I'm going to plug the HDMI cable right back here. And I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to plug it into your monitor right now. Seriously, I'm going to plug this into your, your I keep emphasizing, this is going to go into your monitor right now. You won't feel a thing. I didn't say I wouldn't feel a thing. I said you wouldn't. Tay Eldon has contributed 19 pounds, 99. Great show, Taylor England. That's moderator status right there, Tay London. Thank you. Ooh, what was that? Didn't like me plugging something in there. This is what we call the smoke test. You see computers, they run on smoke. And if you let the smoke out, they don't work anymore. That's not true. Steve Devine's contributed $2. He says, thanks for all you do, Carrie. Hey, thank you, Steve Devine. Thank you guys so much. Okay, we've got our monitor. We've got power. I'm going to flip the switch to on here on the back of the power supply. It's safe to do that now. Wireless keyboard and mouse that's turned on. It's ready to rock and roll. This is the very first time I've ever turned this on. Everything you see is live. It's real. It's unscripted. Unrehearsed. And it is what it is. So let's flip over to your monitor now. Let's use your monitor. I think I'm on your monitor. I know you can hear me still. Here, look at this. It booted. It's a, what is it loading? Oh, we did boot this before. What am I talking about? We did boot this before because, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I forgot. We booted this and we ran heat tests on it with the Dark Rock 4, duh. That's, you know, they say, they, they say there's three things that, that go when you get older. The first thing that goes is your memory. The second thing that goes is, um, what was I talking about? Anyway, so it's all running now. We've got the pump should be running, and let's run um, let's run the Prime ninety five on it and see if if the pump is running. Oh, wait a minute! It's not running. I'm going to hit the power button, and it's going to shut down. We're okay. It's okay. I haven't hooked power up to the pump yet, so therefore these fans are not hooked. I don't even think I hooked the fans up yet. I really dropped the ball on this one. But we're not, it didn't cause any harm. It doesn't hurt anything. Obviously, if we continue to use the machine like that, I mean, it'll work. It'll just throttle a lot. So we don't want that. So let me just take a minute here and finish hooking up the radiator. 
it just take a minute. So what I want to do, we do have the, I did hook the fans up. This is a problem when I break a build up over several days. I can't remember what I did. But this right here is the power cable for, for the um, water block right here, this cable. And I need a cable off of the power supply. I need a SATA cable. And Franklin also wants me to add a one terabyte, two and a half inch A data solid state drive. And I'm going to need a power cable for that too. So either way, I need a power cable. So we go back to the bag of power cables because this power supply is modular. See, a contribution comes in from Carl Curtin has contributed five pound, five euro. He says, love you since day one. This is your year, Carrie. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Carl. This year better go real slow then so I can savor every moment of it. Because I'll tell you what, it certainly hasn't felt like my, my year this year at all. But you keep knocking me down, I'm just going to keep getting right back up. Till you eventually get tired of knocking me down. Not you. The people knocking me down. You certainly can knock me down, but you can't stop me from getting back up. And you will give up long before I ever will. Persistence. It's not just for breakfast. Can't see again. I need my flashlight. Let's find a place where we can plug this in. Oh, he's got the hard drive to hook up and the solid state drive to hook up. We can put the solid state drive back here. So we should be able to use this one power cable and power the solid state drive, the hard drive, and the fan pump all with one cable. Less cables means a cleaner looking installation, cleaner cable management. So back uh, here on the back of the power supply, there's a bunch of little connectors, uh, plugs that we can use. And I like to use the one as far away as possible in a case design like this, because if I plug it in where it's comfortable, like it would be easier for me to plug it in to one of these plugs right here near the edge, but it'll make it harder for me the next time somebody has to get in here, even if that's me, to plug another one beside it because it'll be in the way. So you start all the way in the back, and then when you go to do the next one, it'll be easier. Now we can plug in the, C, the SATA cable power, SATA power cable, let me get the words, why is he is, like I turned into Yoda. Yoda wouldn't have called me wise. Stubborn this one is. Hmm? <laughs> well, that was terrible. Build computers, you must. Just stop, you're no good at that, Carrie. That's the mechanical drive, and then will we reach? No, we won't reach. We can't reach the SATA drive if we plug in the SATA over there. What a bummer. What if we did that a different way? What if we came at it? What if I had plugged the SATA here? Could I reach here? See what I'm thinking of my cable management right now? So if I plug this cable in here, and we save this other end, since these are so far apart, so we want to use the ends for the drives, and then just any one in the middle is all we need. They're all the same. It's sort of like when you have one of those surge protectors, you know, because you run out of plugs to plug your lamp and your stereo and your computer. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're all this. If, if it plugs in, you got power. Same thing. All right, we should see the pump light up when I turn it on now. Franklin wants his RGB. I want my RGB. I want my... 
I want my RGB. Power supply off. On. Power. Why is the pump not lighting up? This pump should light up. Something isn't good here. Fans are also not spinning. It's like it's not getting any power. And I don't know why. So I'm just going to cut power right now. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh, OK. <laughs> so while I've been talking about the pump power connector, the power connector for these fans, right back here on the back of this Fantex case, also has the same connector as the pump. This one's for the pump. So what I have to do now, again, thinking of cable management, this one has to go here in order to not stress the cable. So let's put this one right here. I don't want to go in the cart. You'll be stone dead in a moment. I feel fine. I think I'll go for a walk. Could you do us a favor? When will you be back? Next Thursday. Oh, he'll be long gone by Thursday. I feel happy. I feel happy. What is he talking about? Watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Be a nerd. Join the rest of us. Why doesn't it fit? Okay, if this one's going to go there, then this one needs to go here. Oh, wow. It broke the little end off. Holy smokes. It's not going to hurt anything. There's a little, it's got to be stuck inside of here. That's how, that's how jammed up that is. There's got to be a little plastic piece that broke inside. And that's why I don't like these connectors. That is uh, not uncommon. It, it can happen. It's not a big deal. It's, it's just a little plastic piece that forces you to install it in one direction. That's its only purpose. It doesn't really help to hold it in or prevent it from falling out. And it's very thin, and just a little bit of pressure is all it takes to snap it. And that is apparently what happened. So I have a little dental pick set that looks like this that I picked up at Harbor Freight Tools, and we can get one of these little dental picks out. And I have to put my glasses on to see. There it is. See ya? Put that in the trash can. And that's why a simple plug won't plug in. That's why I always tell you guys, don't, do not force anything. So even though I didn't force anything, that little, pe that little plastic piece broke, but I didn't realize it. So the next connector I was going to plug in wouldn't go in. And I'm, you see me struggling, but you don't see me forcing it. I'm trying to figure out why is this not going in. And you take a look, and that little piece that used to be there is barely there now. So not a big deal, really is not a big deal. So if this one's gonna go to the SSD, this one then, I just have to pay real close attention to not plugging it in upside down, because again, that's what that piece was for. That one's gonna go in this connector. Still feels like it's going in sideways. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> we got there. 
So that one's going there. And then finally, look, we're going to use all four connectors. They're using the whole Buffalo on this build. And now we can plug the pump into this header right here. Now it's going to work. See, mistakes are fine. The world did not end. Nobody got hurt. Parts don't have to be sent back. You plug it in, you're done. Set it, forget it, get on with life. You don't have to have all this anxiety. Oh no. Oh no. Can I have cheeseburger? Bloody Rage RLD3 has contributed 200 Danish kroner, which is, what does that work out to, the United States dollars? $30. Hey, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. That comes from Bloody Rage RLD3. He says, hey, Kerry, thanks for everything you do. Cheers from Denmark. This is about $30. <laughs> I probably should have read that before I, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. Thank you. Stephen Sheik has contributed $5. He says, I'm putting a two terabyte A data SSD in my Asus laptop and now it rocks. Thanks for all the info. Stephen, are you a moderator? Yes, you are. Very good. What about, uh, what about uh, Bloody Rage? I'm not sure about how I feel having a moderator named Bloody Rage. But I got one named Troll McTrollington, so don't judge a book by its cover, right? There you go. Bloody Rage is a, is a bloody monitor now. That sounds like something out of The Shining. Let's fire this bad boy back up. Look at, look at that. Uh, where's my screen? There it is. And let's jump over to your monitor input. Oh, geez, it already booted. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, let's run uh, HW monitor. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at current temperatures of that CPU, all the separate cores. If you really really just need to look at the package temp. The lowest temp it's read is uh, 27. It's currently at 28. I'd say that cooler's doing a good job. And the maximum it's read on this boot is 40 degrees centigrade or Celsius. We'll go to start Prime 95, which is a very unrealistic workload. We'll let it run for 15 minutes. Let me get my timer out. I want to see it stay below 85 degrees Celsius for the entire 15 minutes to ensure that it's not going to have any problems. So we'll start the test first. Then I'm going to hit the timer. There we go. I'm trying to see if I can tilt that in a way that you can read it. And let's watch these temps because we don't need to look at that Prime 95 screen. It doesn't really tell us much. So let's close that window and let's prioritize that window and let's watch these temps. I'm particularly interested on this number right here. This will represent the highest temperature recorded from all the cores. So I never want to see that break 85 degrees in the next 15 minutes. So now we wait. I think I'll stand over here. What's happening, Lyle? You want to say hello? Hmm? Lyle. 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 
Yeah, I see what you're doing. Come here, boy. And this Jimmy. Good Jimmy. Jimmy's such a good boy. You got brains in there? Is your brains in there? Let me listen. Let's see if we can hear your brains. Yep, those brains in there. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. You want to show him your impression? Show him you do a cobra? Come here. Come over here. Can you do a cobra? You're a good boy. You put up with me. You can, listen, you can give me that look all day. Lyle? 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 That's not winning you. Uh-oh. You hear that? What is that? He's just staring at the cookie jar. We need an intervention, Lyle. Yeah. All right. Temps are looking good, but we're only two and a half minutes in. I think I've run out of this. I need to get another one. It's a pretty cool background. <laughs> Lyle says no. All right, let me stand back where I was here so I'm not in the way. Let's take a look at what's going on in the chat room. Yeah, if you have any questions for me right now, it'd be a time to ask. Arcade Jackpot Masters contributed $1.99. He says, love your videos. Well, thank you, Arcade Jackpot Master. Bloody Rage says, my real name is Mickle. Is it Michael? Is it just pronounced Michael? Or is it Mikkel? Karen says, thanks for your help. I fixed my home media server. Turned out to be a faulty USB 3 header cable. Yeah. Very good. Feels good when you get it fixed, right? BDC says, great stream as always. Keep up the good work, Carrie. I enjoy your channel and live streams. Thank you. Carrie had an M2 performance issues with an AMD. Well, it was with the X470 chipset for AMD. The other chipsets for AMD, I didn't have the problem with. So I'm avoiding the X470. Oh, yeah, Natterman's got it covered here in the chat. He says, yeah, X470. So Natterman's got it. Since Natterman is clearly paying attention, Natterman has just earned himself moderator status because the only way you could know that is if you've been watching me. Ah, the problem is he's not watching my YouTube channel. He's outside my kitchen window right now. No, he's not. I'm kidding. Can you use a Samsung laptop solid state drive and a desktop PC? Yes, you can use any SSD in any desktop. Thanks for the Windows 10 upgrade videos. That's from Desert Blacksmith. You're absolutely welcome. Fans are cranking up on this thing. 
What's our temp looking like now? Oh, I gotta make it full screen so I can read it. Ooh, how are we hitting those temps? That's crazy. Something's not right, so we're gonna. Uh, there's no panic involved. This is this is my own little thing I got going on here. So let's stop this test. So we just go to uh, test and stop. That was not expected. That's surprising. Am I using 26.6? Why did I put 29.4 on here? There's an issue with, uh, with Prime 95. I gotta exit the software. Let's, let's exit the software. Watch these, you see how fast the temps dropped when I stopped Prime 95? So let's get rid of that. I don't wanna make that mistake anymore. Uh, I've got a flash drive here with my utilities on it. And I'm gonna just plug that in back here. And we'll open that up, and we'll grab uh, Prime 95, 26.6 is all I want, right here, 26.6. Now the other thing I could do, I could run 29.4, but I, w I would have to change the default test values, and I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, so it's just easier for me to go to 26.6. Now. I'm going to leave that there for a minute because what I need to do is I need to clear these maximum values out because that's not a, an accurate number. The test is not based on the, the default test settings that the folks at Prime95 changed. Um, those numbers are not realistic. So we're going to hit the clear and we're going to clear the minimum and maximum temperature settings and reset them back. And we're going to start the test again. So I'm going to now uh, reset the timer. And then I'm going to hit test. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just stress testing. See these default values? They changed the memory to use and they changed the time to run in uh, later versions of Prime 95. And it's affecting, um, it's, it's, it's basically beating the crap out of the floating point uh, um, unit, the, the part of the CPU that uh, would never get hammered like that. So anyway, so uh, always use Prime 95 26.6. Let's hit OK on that and let's start the timer and let's see what happens now. Thanks for catching that, guys. Now, if it's still gonna hit 99 degrees, I got a problem. That means I did not seat the water block properly. That's what that'll tell me. But if I've seated it properly, and I do believe I have, we should not exceed 85 degrees centigrade. Joe Vett says, I think this is the computer you first found out about the problem with Prime 95. Joe is correct, and Joe has just earned mod status. Well done, Joe. Well done. I love it when my students pay attention. I'm going to cut the audio for a minute. I have to go wash my hands, and we need to let this run for about 15 minutes. I'll be back to talk to you in a minute. Hang in there.
Okay, sorry about that. We can, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant, where are you? Is that creepy? I'm reluctant to uh, change this view right now because I want you to see the timer to accurately measure the time. I mean, I suppose you could just look at the clock in the system tray, but we're going to be precise. And in the meantime, again, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them while we're waiting. This test is running much better now. Ziggy, you just hit somebody, which means you shouldn't have, and I'm taking away your moderator status for right now. Carrie, are the presentations on invitation? Uh, the presentations are for local computer clubs. If you're a member of the computer club, uh, then you, are, of course, are uh, welcome to attend. They're not open to the public. Unless the computer club invites you, or some computer clubs have rules about that. Like, if you know a member of the computer club, they can bring you as a guest. But if you're just a random and you just show up, uh, yeah, you, you don't belong there. <laughs> So race and Ray was timed out, and all race and race said is it's it's a it's a pleasure uh, following a gay technician. He didn't mean gay in the sense gay has another meaning. <clears throat> he says so soothing to listen to. Thank you. So you can look up the word gay and understand what that word means. It is not a bad word, and it wasn't used in a negative way. Harry, what is your favorite cot pot meal? I don't know what a cot pot is. How many gallons of Coke do you drink a day? Well, I just drink two bottles that are eight ounces each. So that's a total of... Um, how many ounces are in a gallon? There are 128 ounces in a gallon, and I drink about 16 ounces. So I drink about a gallon every nine days. One gallon every nine days. Thank you, doctor. Crock pot. I don't cook with a crock pot. My wife does. I don't. We've got 812 people watching. Why don't you give me a shout out? Tell me where you're watching me from. We still have uh, four minutes left on the test. So, uh, what country are you in, or, or what uh, state are you in? Carrie, how often do you give presentations? I give presentations when the computer clubs schedule with me. Some years I give uh, 
a dozen, two dozen. This year I've only done two, so it's really hard to say. People pay for those presentations, they're not free. I mean, the people, the computer club receives dues from their members to be, you know, annual dues. So the people in attendance are not paying an admission fee. It comes with their um, membership to the computer club. And the computer club uses some of that membership money to pay for me. Wow, look at all these people watching from all over the world. We've got Finland and California and Malta and France and the UK and Bonnie, Scotland and Romania. Coco, Florida, Texas. More Texas, more Florida and Oklahoma. There's Belgium and Munich, Germany. There's uh, more Tennessee, more Florida, more UK. There's Maryland, Tulsa, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Frankfurt, Slovenia, Syracuse. Brazil, Oregon, Springfield, Missouri, home of the Simpsons. Not so much. Swiss Skynet watches us from Switzerland, where it's uh, 15 minutes after midnight in Switzerland, which puts Switzerland eight hours ahead of me. What else? We have another UK, more England, Michigan, Lisbon, Portugal. Fairfield, Iowa, Winchester, Kentucky, another in Scotland, Prague, Czechia, che is it, how do you pronounce that, Czechia? Minnesota, British Columbia, Ohio, Rialto, California, Berkshire, UK, Denmark, Houston, Texas, another in Denmark, Windsor in Ontario, Canada, that's very close to where I was born and raised, in Detroit, Michigan, very, very close indeed. Salisbury in Wiltshire, UK, California again, Peachtree City in Georgia, Allentown, Pennsylvania. I got that Billy Joel song in my head now. Poland, Georgia, South Florida, Porterville, California, Irving, Texas, North Carolina, Sligo or Sligo, Ireland, Florida, Louisiana, Italy, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Wyoming, Australia, Victoria, Australia. More in the UK, Sweden, Tulsa, Croatia, Chicago, the Netherlands, Wisconsin, Louisiana, Maynard, Massachusetts. Bulgaria, Cartagena, Colombia, Slovakia, Sydney, Australia, Greece, Italy, North Wales, Amsterdam, Norway. Wow, New Jersey, from Norway to New Jersey, we got you covered. The Czech Republic, Cairo, New York, Holland, Sunderland in the UK. Oh, I think the computer just went to sleep. Let me rattle the mouse. Rattle, 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 should wake up. Oh, right at 15 minutes too, that was clever. And, see what, what we can do here. Let me come back to the test results. <clears throat> Maximum temps this time around, running Prime 95, 26.6. I can stop this test because we've, we've gone past, we're almost at 16 minutes, which is a full minute beyond the test. And again, if you watch our current temps right down this row, watch how fast it'll start to cool down. It takes a little bit longer on a liquid cooler to cool down those cores than an air cooler, but they do drop pretty rapidly, as you just witnessed. And I can be done with this timer. And if you want, you can look back at parts one, two, and three when you see this test being done on the Dark Rock 4, the Mugen 5, and the Hyper 212 Evo with all the same configuration and now with the X62 to determine if it's worth the money because the X62 is the most expensive and most difficult to install. Ooh, it's a little bit warm. Not, it's not hot, it's just, you can tell it's on. It's, it's basically a little above room temperature, so it's nice and 
uh, I wouldn't even say toasty, it's just warm. Like a seat that somebody just <laughs> got up from. What a terrible example that is. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Let's go back to camera one. There we go. And let's bring this back. That's too much of me. Let's see. Zoom it in just a little. Mm. I, I, I don't have a happy middle here. All right, let's try that. And let's bring this in here. Very good. So the last thing I have to do here with Franklin's computer is we've got to get the hard drive installed and we've got to get the solid state drive installed. And as far as, you know, there's some software to control the RGB. There's the NZXT cam software to control the, the colors and the pattern if you want it to breathe or you want it to blink or you want it to pulse or you want it to spin. And if you want it to spin in one color or if you want it to spin in numerous colors, these are all options that are controlled through that USB cable using the NZXT CAM software, which will also monitor your attempts. So as Skynet has contributed, uh, what is, where is it, where'd it go? Got everything on the wrong side of the table. Two Swiss francs, which is almost equivalent to two US dollars. It's a, actually just a one Swiss franc is worth about 99 cents. That's a pretty close exchange rate. I had no idea. Well, thank you for the contribution. I very much appreciate that. That's from Swiss Skynet. Swiss Skynet, I'm going to make you a moderator. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for being a part of this amazing community. Paul says, I bet Franklin is looking forward to this PC. He's right there. You can ask him. So what I've got here is the um, A-Data. It's the 960 gig. They're all, all SSDs that are one terabyte are basically the same size. Even if they report a little bit smaller, it's basically the same on the inside. They might have some spare room for provisioning and things like that, but... Don't feel like you're getting ripped off or something because the, the number is smaller. Thomas Carter's just contributed two pounds. Hey, thank you, Thomas. I gotta cut the tape on this box. It's a brand new, never opened solid state drive. We're still doing the solid state drive, right, Franklin? Oh, Franklin. <laughs> Franklin said, what about my graphics card? Yeah, you probably want that, right? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Probably helps if we put a GPU in there, especially for the amount of money it costs. It's sitting right here, by the way. It's, it's not, <laughs> it's, there's a GTX 1070 right in my face. Good catch, Franklin. We're still doing this though, right, Franklin? You still want this before I take it out of the box? Just looking for a confirmation. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to um, shut the computer down. Franklin said, yep, okay, good. Very good, thank you, Franklin. Let's go back to the main camera. And let's take a look at the EVGA, the GeForce 1070 Ti. So I got on the phone with the folks at EVGA and I said, how come these last two GTX 1070s didn't come with any documentation, they didn't come with any stickers, they didn't come with any adapter cables, they always have. And this is the second GTX 1070 Ti that's done that? Did you guys change something in your packaging? This is not that I'm aware of. I said, well, hold on, I got a 1070 Ti here, and I opened it. I, I wanted to cut the tape on box on the, on the camera. Cut the tape from the box 
on camera, but I was on the phone with EVGA and I said, hold on, let me open this one up and see if it comes with all the stuff. This is not a 1070, it's a 1070 Ti. All the parts lists, by the way, are in the video notes below this video. So I open this up, and I'm like, hold on, you know, I'm talking to the guy at EVGA. Let's see. And this one has the poster. It's got this little catalog. It's got these Go Faster stickers. It's got a metal case badge, which has been taped. Metal case badge and documentation. Right? The box, the rest of the box is empty. And I said, okay. So the 1070 Ti has everything in it I was expecting, but now I've had two 1070s that are just a card and there's nothing else in the box. Is that normal? He says, let me check and I'll get back to you. So somebody gets back to me and they said, uh, yeah, that's how we're doing it from now on. And I said, okay, good to know. He said, if you've got a box that still has that stuff, it's probably older inventory. The newer inventory won't have it. Great. Then the original guy got back to me and he said, nope, we're still shipping everything the same. So if you want that stuff, let us know and we'll mail it to you. I said, I just talked to somebody else. They said that you're not doing it. He says, hold on. He checks with his manager, comes back, says, I just checked with my manager and we haven't changed anything. I go, well, somebody at EVGA doesn't know what's going on because you both work there, you're both in support, and you're both saying exactly the opposite of the other one. So at this time, I, I'm no further... Uh, aware of what it's supposed to be than I was when I made the call. It is more confusing now as it was then because even the people at EVGA don't seem to know the answer. And I like EVGA. They always seem to know what's going on. They always seem to have the answers and they've never pulled a stunt like this before. And I'm not happy about it. It's a very simple question. Should I be expecting these little things in here or should I not? I don't want them. I think it's a waste of money. I just want to tell my audience, when you unbox something, you, are you gonna, should you expect to see the same stuff in your box that I got in my box? And they have not been clear. One person says yes, one person says no, one person's manager says no. I don't know. In the meantime, I don't know how you're ever going to install your GPU without a poster. It's probably one of the stupidest things that they could add. I'm sure there's plenty of 40-year-old men putting this over their bed. If it'll unfold. Because you know, when you order a $700 graphics card, it better come with a poster. Wait, what? And there's a black sticker and a white sticker. And if these little arrows on the sticker were pointing the other way, they would slow your computer down. But because the arrow is here and it has little flames coming off of it, that'll make your computer go 10% faster. No, well. Thank God they included that. And there's a catalog for more stuff you can order. Thank goodness they included that. And there's a case badge in case those stickers don't make your computer go any faster. This case badge will. Oh, but wait. There's instructions. That's something you actually can find useful when you order a graphics card for $700. Okay. So we get that out of its container. That's what it looks like. It's going to have plastic on it for protecting it during shipping. You are supposed to remove... You see the red words right there? Remove protective film before use. And there's also a little plastic thing, a rubber thing, covering up the slot. Just get rid of that. See the way I'm holding the card? See why I don't have to wear an electrostatic strap? 
I'm not holding it right here. That would be the worst place you could hold it is on this exposed gold contacts. And if you grab the back of it, there's no back plate on this. And not only is this a, an easy way to get an electrostatic discharge, it's an easy way to cut yourself because many of those soldering points are sharp. They're like putting your hand on a pin. It'll, I've bled many times. So if you hold it by the plastic shroud, that's the best way to hold it. But since the plastic shroud has this film on it, I'm gonna grab it down here by the heat sink, by the edges. I am not making contact with anything metal on the circuit board. And therefore, if there was an electrostatic discharge, it had no, it's got no, no place to go. An all day to get there. That's it. Sometimes they put one up here. Is there one up here? I don't think so. I can't tell. Sometimes there's a little plastic cover on this one and this one. That doesn't matter. Unless it bubbles up and you like it to look clear. And this will light up, so if it, if it bubbles up, it's going to look terrible. And then there's another little cover right here. This is for the bridging connector for people that want to do SLI, which is pretty much dead. SLI is just not worth the money, and a lot of games don't really take advantage of it properly, and the actual benefits uh, aren't worth the amount of money and trouble you have to go through to configure it and pay for it and get it working, plus the more p power you have to draw, bigger power supply. It's a big hassle. It's, it's just generally accepted that it's just not worth having SLI unless you have a special use case scenario. And we always want to install the graphics card on the top slot. This is going to be the fastest slot on all motherboards, always the top one. Sometimes other slots can be just as fast. The second slot, <clears throat> I think this first slot actually will go to half speed if you put the M.2 drive up here instead of down here. Or I might be thinking of the other board. It'll say in your documentation, but you might want to be aware of that. So always use this top slot. And it looks like we're going to have to take out these two PCI slot covers for that to work, for us to get the card in. First, I want to unplug power from the motherboard. Let me get my flash drive out of there and get it out of the way. And in fact, I might as well unplug my HDMI cable because when we plug the HDMI back in, it's going to go down here. We're not going to use this one anymore. In fact, in order to prevent that confusion, because I've had dozens of customers go, how come my frames per second is terrible? And they go, well, which monitor, which video card did you plug your monitor into? And they go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, if you look on the back of the case, you'll see you've got an HDMI port up here by your keyboard and stuff, and you'll have one down below. Oh, I plugged into the top one. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So here we can just take the HDMI plug off of, which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, see there? Expose that one and take this little plug that was there and let's plug it in here so the customers aren't tempted to, to use that. Otherwise, it, this would just go in the box with the motherboard box, you know, the old mother... Normally, I take any of these little spare parts and I put it in the motherboard box, all the documentation, all the stickers, it all goes in the empty motherboard box, so it's all contained in one place, and all the other boxes get thrown away so that the customer gets their computer, they'll have the bag that has the power cables, and they'll have the motherboard box that has all the documentation, driver disks, stickers, and spare parts, all in one place. And then you want to put that box away, because if you need to do an upgrade or repair, you're going to want those parts. And hopefully you, won't de you shouldn't need any upgrade or repair for a couple of years. So put the box somewhere where you'll find it in a couple of years. That's all I'm saying. All right. So we're going to take out this one here. That'll go in the motherboard box. And that one there. Make sure that this little... Uh, retention lever is in the open position before you try to install your graphics card. The graphics card will appear to go in upside down, but it's actually right side up, right? The EVGA, the fans face down, and the EVGA logo can be read through the case window. 
we can move these pipes a bit out of the way. See that USB cable is a little in our way too. We can raise that up, slide the, the card into the slot, and line up the connector on the card with the socket on the motherboard. Make sure that's all lined up. And then you see how I've got my hand. I'm going to push straight in, and you should hear it click. Perfect. Now we're going to put these two screws back in that we just took out, and that's going to secure the card so that when we ship it, it's not going to break free. All kinds of Freddie Mercury Queen references today, huh? I want to break free. All right. Now we have to give it power. This video card needs an 8-pin power connector, and it looks like I've missed a few contributions. Let's give a couple shouts out here to some folks, to some kind of folks who have generously parted with their hard-earned money. Jacob Alvarez has contributed $5. He says, just because it's Friday and it's Carrie and he can have a cold Coke on me. Thank you, Jacob. Rodrigo Vieira has contributed... Uh, Oh, what money is Brazil using? Um, I gotta look up what that's called. Um, Five Brazilian reals, so it's a real, huh? A dollar twenty-nine. Well, thank you so much. That came from Rodrigo Vieira. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thomas Carter contributed uh, two pounds. So thank you guys for your support, your contributions. Eight hundred and fifty-two people are watching right now. Okay. So let's get some power hooked up to this graphics card. Then we can run the Heaven Benchmark and get a copyright match ID taken, right? So back in the box of cable, well, the bag of cables for this Seasonic power supply, we're going to dig through here. And we're going to pull out the graphics card. Ah, here it is. It's called a PCIe cable. It looks like that. Leaf Belly has contributed $5. He says, I'm new to the channel, but love it. Thanks for all of your help. That's awesome. Hey, Leaf Belly, welcome in. I hope you become a leading a member of the community. Just having you as a member of the community, I, I hope it's not a one-time visit. I hope you continue to join us. We're always, uh, always look forward to watching the community grow with kind, supportive, and like-minded individuals. Let me move that over here. So you'll see the end of this cable has two connectors, and each connector has an additional two pins. Some video cards need six, some need eight, some need 14, and some need 16. Doesn't matter which one of these you want to use if your graphics card only takes one. Whatever looks best on cable management, I find if I zip tie one of these back like that and then plug that in, if there's only one needed, it looks cleaner, but that's my opinion. It ultimately doesn't matter outside of aesthetics. They both perform uh, the same. So back here on the back of the power supply, I need to grab the flashlight that I thought I was done with. Hold on a minute. I think I, think I need a break for a second. I need a Galaxian break. Oh no, I'm going to try and play this backwards.
Well, that didn't last. You know what? Forget that game. I don't like that one. Let's do this game instead. My gaming computer cost twelve dollars. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. All right. PCI Express. PCI Express. Ah. Okay. So I have to use one of the three connectors at the bottom of the power supply. So I want to use the one as far away from me as possible. Again, for the same reason I talked about earlier. So I'm going to reach in there and plug that in right there. Actually, come to think of it, that's a bad location. I'll use the one on the end, and that way the middle will be wide open to reach in there for others. That makes more sense because three of them are for the PCI Express, and then the last two no, there's three for PCI Express and three for SATA. So start one at each end and then the, the middle's wide open that way. So if you need to get in there next to the SATA connector in there, having this one all the way back would make that space even narrower and more difficult to get into. So that's the logic I'm using. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, let's go through here. And let's take a look inside. Let's see, we wanna go here. A lot of cables are going to be coming in through this. I'm just bring it in down below. Try and keep that ma cable management as minimal as possible. Yeah, I don't like how I'm wrapped around these cables, so I want to reroute it right now to avoid having to reroute it again later. Let's try and get it done right the first time. So we'll come in behind everything else. Yeah, that'll be good right there. And then in through here, I'll pull that through. See how clean that's going to look now. Get it away from all these other cables. We'll get to managing that a bit later. And then the clip on this graphics card will face down. And I need to have that extra two pin. I'm holding it that way to hold the two pin up against the rest of the connector. And you should hear it click. Now, we can plug it back in, test fire it, make sure that the graphics are working properly. So back to the HDMI cable, making sure that we plug it into the graphics card this time, down here, and not the one up here that I just plugged up. And um, power, we can hook power up now, make sure the switch is off. And we'll plug in power. Let me get this stuff out of my way. Flip the switch on. Let's swing you over to the capture card and let's see how long it takes for this to boot. Here we go. You ready to start your clocks? Wait for the, be fair. Now start your clock right there. There's your boot. And let me get my flash drive again, my utilities that has the Heaven benchmark on it. We'll plug that in. That ought to be good right there. And let's go to PC testing software. Heaven benchmark. We have to install the Visual C for 32-bit and 64-bit. Heaven Benchmark requires that, but it just takes a second. That one's done. 
We'll do this one next. And then finally, we can install the Heaven benchmark. And let's benchmark it. Let me get rid of me out of the corner because we don't need nobody needs to see that. So the benchmark to run it, you have to press F9, and right now it's loading. Ooh, that was quick. And it'll start running in a demo mode. And once the demo mode starts, hit F9, and you'll start seeing the frames per second counted on the screen, and that's how you know the benchmark is running. And we'll see what kind of numbers we get out of this bad boy. What do you think? Oh, I probably should install the driver, right? I was wondering why it's taking so long. <laughs> I'm in a big hurry today, can you tell? I'm like jumping ahead of everything. I'm like, let's go. Move it. Chop, chop. So rather than wait for this, let me, let me hit escape, see if I can't cancel that. <laughs> can't believe I just did that. We need to install the driver. You see how big the icons are on the desktop? That's your first indication that the driver is not installed. So what I'm going to do, I can go to Windows Update and grab that one, but I'd rather go to NVIDIA and grab it. Um, and it just so happens I have the driver on the flash drive. So we'll just go back to the flash drive. 41935 should be the latest. It just came out two days ago. And let's get that installed real quick. Then we'll run the benchmark. Geez, Franklin. First, I wasn't going to install the graphics card. Then I installed it, and then I didn't install the driver. Am I in a hurry or what? I'm sitting there going, why is this benchmark taking so long to load? Carrie is tired today. No, I'm just, I'm, I've got so many things happening at the same time. I'm trying to get them done quickly. And in getting it done quickly, it's taking me longer. See what I did there? So don't, that's why I tell you guys, slow down and enjoy your build. I feel bad Franklin's had to wait this long and I'm trying to get it pushed out so we don't have any more delays. And there are two builds waiting to happen behind Franklin and I can't start them until I get him done. And on top of that, I've got video edits happening. I had the presentation. I've got, oh, so many things. My father's still in the hospital. We still don't know what's going on with that. And I can keep talking if you want with all the things going on. Or you could just take my word for it. I have a lot going on. <laughs> I'm not bored. Louise says, I missed a contribution from Christoph. I mentioned Christoph. Did Christoph, oh, he did it twice, I see. So Christoph contributed again, five euro. He says, how is your Intel Nook doing after the Windows 10 update? It's fantastic, fantastic. In fact, I think it's better with Windows 10. It seems to be faster. Michael Dane has contributed $5. Thank you, Michael. And uh, Luis, thank you for letting me know that I missed that contribution. You need to clone yourself. If I clone myself, the world would explode. The universe is like, there can only be one carry. If there were two carries, the whole universe would implode. Just saying. There we go. Now the resolution kicked in. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I appreciate your thoughts on that.
801 people are watching. I just want to know who the one is. Is that you? Louise said, I contributed myself, but it's not too important. I went through all the contributors, so how, how am I missing you? What's happening? Michael Dane has contributed $5 again. Let me go back through the list. Oh, oh, I missed a couple. Winston Ang Lu has contributed two Canadian dollars and says Guten Tag, Carrie, which is interesting because Winston is clearly Asian and he lives in Canada and he just said something in German. <laughs> it's truly a worldwide audience. Luis Maya, there's his contribution, $5. He says, I believe you have dropped this. Take it. Well, Louise, you were truer than you thought, weren't you? Because I just became aware. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, well, if I'm missing contributions, that's a good problem to have for me. And our driver is installed now, so we can start running the benchmark. I apologize for that, guys. I'm sorry. It's just more stuff to pay attention to. Camera, focus, audio, what are you building? Pay attention to the chat. I'm doing what I can. I am, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay. And yes, if I miss your contribution, please make me aware of it. I don't, I wanna make sure everybody who contributes gets the credit they deserve. Here we go, now I can hit F9 and let's start benchmarking. Louise says, it's all right, Carrie. You're doing quality work, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Louise. I, I appreciate your understanding. I'm much better when I focus on one thing, and trying to balance all of this is uh, something I'm still trying to master. I'm not sure I'll ever master it without help, but I'm doing the best I can, and I appreciate that. Do you appreciate it? I appreciate that you appreciate my appreciation for your consideration and your contribution Jimmy Bateman says, we got your back, Carrie. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. All the parts lists are in the video notes. If you want to know what the CPU is or what any of the parts list, all you have to do is look under the video at the video notes, and all the parts are listed there for that reason. Crazy Vera sent me his first edit on the new machine that was made using uh, the motherboard and CPU sent by a viewer. And uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I think this whole series of Franklin's build will be edited down into one master build with all of the uh, chit chat cut it, trimmed away. Uh, think of Crazy Vera as a butcher and he's cutting away all the fat. So for those of you who haven't watched the first three parts, you can look forward to a consolidated build of the four parts combined into one video with all of the uh, nonsense removed. Mitchell Morrison joins us. Mitch says hello. Hey, Mitch. Mitch and I are working on a little project for a future video I think you guys are going to like. What do you think, Franklin? What are your thoughts so far? Is this like water torture? Carrie, what does your wife think of Windows 10 on her Nook? She uses Windows 10 at work, so it's not a problem didn't really affect her either way. wonder how much power we're drawing from the wall right now. 250 watts, 268, 273. 
238, 269. Oh, you better get that 750 watt power supply. Nope, not so much. The reality is, uh, this if we ran Prime 95 and everything at the same time, I don't think we'd break 500 watts. And even then, it would just be for a moment and it would drop back down. Although that would be enough to blue screen if that happened, if your computer tried to draw po more power than it could provide from your power supply. But we're running right around 250, 243, 242, 255, 260, 264, 265. This kilowatt meter, you can buy it on Amazon and you can actually see how much power your devices are really using. And then depending on where you live and what your kilowatt hour rate is, you can calculate what it costs you to, I don't know, leave the computer idle. If you leave the computer idle and turn the monitor off, it probably costs you a nickel a week. It's really cheap, at least here in the US. There's your final benchmark numbers, 216.4 on the frames per second. Total score of 5451, the specifications, the settings, all right there on screen for you to peruse. And with that, I'm going to hit escape. I'm gonna move the mouse up here to hit quit. I'm gonna hit it and quit it. And escape one more time. And close. And now we're gonna shut it back down. Shut it back down. Bingo. And we'll switch back over to camera one. And we're back on camera one. Steven Cicero says, I watched Mitchell's YouTube inner Sam Kinison video and it kept me in stitches. Mitch's kept you in stitches. Mitch does stand-up comedy, like for real. And if you haven't watched his stand-up comedy, there is a link to his YouTube channel. Or you can just go to YouTube search and type in Mitchell Morrison comedy. Or just type Mitchell Morrison and look for the picture of Mitch. That's his channel. And check out his comedy. I promise if you don't like it, you can get your money back. 100. He'll double your money back. Does your wife use her use a desktop at her work? Yes, most people that are employed in the United States use a desktop at work. Colin Robertson says a shout out from the UK. Cheers, Colin. Cheers, mate. Does that sound funny coming from an American? Oi! Aya. <laughs> How's it? What do they say? What you call it? What else do they say? All right, Colin. I try. I'm trying. I've never been there. I'm just parroting out what I've seen on TV. Paul Hynek has contributed $4.99. Hey, Paul. Thank you for your contribution, my friend. I appreciate that very much. Steve Caruso has contributed $5. He says, hello. Hi, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Pat Johnston says, hello. Hi, Pat. Anthony Wilson's joining us. Evening all, he says. I finally made a live stream. Wow. Time difference to the UK is a killer. Sterling work, carry. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Nighthawk says, Carrie Holzman, number one tech teacher. Well, flattery will get you everywhere. Thank you for that. Where did Mitch go? Franklin says he loves his computer. He's loving it. Very good, Franklin. I'm happy to hear that. What do I think about the upcoming update to Windows 10? I love all updates to Windows 10. There's never been an update to Windows 10 I've never liked. Every update is better than the one before it. If you've got 300 million plus users of Windows 10 and 1% of those people have a problem, 
it's still a lot of people. But I will say that the Windows updates have always been better. Uh, maybe they have some installation issues sometimes, but overall they're successful. They're statistically more likely to succeed at the update than not having it. There's new features, new bells and whistles, and everything just gets better and better and better. As far as I'm concerned, um, you shouldn't really have a choice. The internet is evolving at an amazing evolutionary rate that is incredibly amplified. And so being on the internet with an, uh, an older operating system leaves you potentially vulnerable to exploits, depending on how you use the internet. That possibility is there. And when you use a newer version of Windows, and if you make sure you have all the latest updates in that moment, at that time, then you are reasonably as secure as you can be at that time. When you postpone updates because they're too inconvenient for you, I wonder how identity theft will fare in your scheduling. Uh, but it's yours, it's your identity, it's your computer, and if you're more concerned over convenience than your identity, I just, I'm a practical technician, and I'm not, I really don't care about the RGB lights, I don't care about people who are passionate about uh, Windows XP, I, it's gone, it's done. If you're gonna be on the internet, you need to be protected. And these updates are nothing you should be sneering at. They're nothing you should be concerned about. You should embrace everyone that comes along because it's free and Microsoft doesn't like giving away things for free, I can assure you. It costs literally millions of dollars to develop and distribute. The bandwidth bill alone is probably more than I will ever earn in a lifetime. And then people complain about it. It's the weirdest. We're living in a very strange time of history. Because if you don't like it, all you have to do is unplug it. You can go buy a Mac, you can install Linux. Nobody's forcing you to use it. And you're not even paying for these updates. So my advice to you is when these Windows updates come, embrace them. If you don't like them, get away from Microsoft. Go join Mac, or the Apple crowd. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure they're serving Kool-Aid over there daily. Or, or, or join Linux, right? Those are your options. Or just use your phone or your tablet and stick with Android. We probably don't like those updates either. Not that the person asks, but that's usually where that leads. The reason why people typically ask me that question is they, um, they're hoping to hear something that agrees with them, which is usually, not always, but usually that they don't like it, that it's bad, that it's evil. And I can't get on board with that line of reasoning for something that's free in, in your best interest. Sort of like when your parents make you take that medicine and the medicine doesn't taste good, but it's good for you. Uh, and you don't want it, but it's for your own best interest. It's kind of like that. But uh, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. You asked. <laughs> Just saying. Carrie, would you, use, would you recommend the use of classic shell on Windows 10? Nope. I suggest you learn how to use Windows 10. It's ready, it's, it's so simple. Why, why would you wanna go backwards? I don't understand that. Steve Devine says, hey Mitchell, you did a great job on your computer build and I hope you are enjoying it. Thank you, Steve, that's kind of you to say that to Mitch. Mitch and I went to Grimaldi's and we ordered a large pizza and I said, well Mitch, you're gonna be taking half of this pizza home with you because a pizza a large at Grimaldi's is like, me and Mitch, we sat at the bar. We talked to my buddy Brian at the bar. And before you know it, just me and Mitch, that pizza was gone. I've never eaten half of a large pizza. Not since I was a teenager. And I guess we were both so famished from the build. And it's not like we scarfed it down. Under. We were talking and casually eating. And before you know it, I can't believe that we ate the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Patrick Manning says, Classic Shell was great on Windows 8 and 8.1. I'm on board with you on that, Patrick. But I gotta tell you, the Windows, if, if you bring up the Windows Start menu and you don't like the way it looks, make it look the way you want it to look. You know, Right click on stuff you don't want and remove it. Off. All that stuff that appears to the right, all those icons and tiles, right click on each one and remove them 
And then when you open the start menu, if you've removed them all, it'll be a narrow start menu like what you're accustomed to seeing in Windows 7 and Windows 8. It's not a big deal. Well, I suppose like Windows 7. No. I mean, Windows 8, you'd have to do the same thing. You could remove the tiles and, and trim that taskbar down. Is RoboForm good? Uh, I recommend RoboForm or LastPass. I think they're both very good. But you can download a trial and decide for yourself. It'd be like asking me if this hamburger is any good. Well, the way I like a hamburger and the way you like a hamburger may not be the same. And so what I think is good, you could think is disgusting. So the only way that anybody can decide if something is good is for each person who's curious to experience it and decide for themselves. Niall, Neil Rutherford has contributed 10 pounds. He says, I have done and loving it. You have done what? Thank you for the contribution. Tempter Enthusiast Gaming says, hey, Carrie, how's it going? It goes. Franklin, Ab Franklin sends a happy smiley face. A viewer was asking about running Prime 95 in an open case. Yeah, whether the case is open or closed isn't going to make a very large difference in your uh, CPU temps. In fact, it's a very easy test. The amount of time it took you to type your question, you could just as easily remove your side panels. It's just two screws. Run the test, measure your temps, put the side panels back on, run the test and measure your temps. It's a negligible difference. It really doesn't matter. You know, when we're talking about differences of 10 or more degrees, then I'm interested. But a difference of one to three degrees centigrade is negligible because the ambient room temperature is going to change throughout the day. You're, the room that your computer's in doesn't maintain a single temperature for any period of time worth mentioning. It'll always be varying. It'll be a little cooler, it'll be a little hotter throughout the day. And even as you run the test, the temperature of the room will change. So this idea of absolutes and this kind of scrutiny just doesn't apply to consumers. If you're looking at that sort of thing, you might want to think about being an engineer and working in a laboratory with $10,000 temperature monitoring equipment. But the reality is it's just not a practical thing normal people do. Or when I say normal people, I, I really mean to say ordinary people, the regular mass amounts of people that use their computers. The majority couldn't tell you what temperature they are and couldn't care less. And I think they're right. There's other things to be worried about. For example, what's your temperature? People who don't do Windows updates, says Daryl Hilton, remind me of anti-vaxxers. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, except your data, your, your, your data and your identity can be fixed. Colin says, I've been in the USA once and pizzas were like satellite dishes. Yeah, welcome to America. Is a K7700 stock cooler adequate? There's no such thing as a stock cooler on a 7700K. It doesn't come with a cooler. Where should you run an onboard WLAN wireless card antenna? Wherever you get the strongest signal. Everybody's location is different. The antennas and the cards are different. You move it around just like the old fashioned TV with the rabbit ears until your signal comes in. Your lo house location to the, to the signal will be different than your neighbors. And so the position of your antenna will be different than the position of your neighbors. That's the true of all antennas and all devices. That's why they move around. Nobody can tell you where your antenna needs to be unless they're there looking at the signal. You know, are you, are you getting three bars or four bars? How about now? That's how you decide where it goes. Nobody can tell you that. Do you use foam inside of the PC case for shipping? No, I do not. The, uh, it's important we leave, when we ship, we leave everything open in here because foam can conduct static. Anything you place in here has the potential to distribute and encourage an electrostatic discharge. So it's very important when I ship a computer that 
the, every, the cable management's done, that the cables aren't going to come loose, that they're not too tight and not going to pop off. you got to do your cable management where it's not too loose and not too tight. Then when I ship, this, this case will go back in the case box, and then that case box will be laid flat with the video card, you know, like this. So the video card's facing down. I don't want the video card hanging upside down. And then the address label goes on top, and then it's packed with what's called RAM pack. It's this brown paper material. And that means that the person delivering it has to have the box upright in order to see the address to where it's going. It doesn't mean they're going to keep it that way. But ideally, if, the, if they're shipping this, ideally they won't place it with the graphics card down and then stack a bunch of boxes on top of it because how would they ever see the address to where it's going? So I'm counting on that. I'm counting on them keeping the address up. And so the address is going to go on the, on the second box so that this can lay horizontally flat. And I've never had a problem, even though the computer, well, no, the computer I shipped to Australia, I took the graphics card out of it, because that one I didn't want to risk. But all the computers I've shipped from here to the opposite edge of the United States have arrived without any problem at all. People make a bigger deal out of that. But most people don't double box computers. Companies like Dell would rather save money on the shipping and the packing and just put a little plastic thing and make you remove it. When you order a computer from me, once you take it out of the box, you can plug it in and start using it. You don't have to take the panel off and remove anything, except for the guy in Australia. But I made him a video just for him that you guys never got to see that said, hey, Rodney, here's how you put your video card in. And I've already got the cables managed, and they're right down in here. Reach in here and pull them out, plug them in, put these two screws in, and then put the panel back on and fire it up. Really easy instructions for Rodney. Um... I sent a computer to Barbados, or was it Bermuda? It was Bermuda. I sent one to Bermuda and it had the graphics card in it, and there's no problem, no problem at all. But it's the trick is to double box it. The trick is to put the case back in the case box, mark it, take an, a marker, and mark which arrow this side up. So that means when they hold the package, that this side right here is going to face up, and the graphics card will be seated down so the graphics card won't hang upside down during shipping. That's what's going to break it. All right, so we still have the solid state drive to install, and I still have the mechanical hard drive to install. However, I'm already 10 minutes past where I need to stop streaming. So I'm going to take care of that stuff offline, and I'm going to do the cable management. And then um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. But there's nothing to... You know, the hard drive has already been covered, the installation. The solid state drive is just going to go in the back. It's a super easy install. The power cable is already right there waiting for the solid state drive. And then all I have to do is connect the SATA cable to a SATA connector from the hard drive and from the SSD right here on the motherboard and partition and format those drives, which I've already covered so many times. It's just repeating myself now. And when we're done, Franklin will have the main SSD that we're booting from will be, always be his C drive. The second SSD will be his D drive, and the hard drive will be his E drive, and that's the way it's going to roll. So once I get this all wrapped up, I'll make another video, just a quick one, to just show you what it looks like, and that way the editor can take all these pieces, stitch them all together, cut out all the non-related building talk, and have one master video from start to finish, uh, just without the connectors on the drive. I mean, it gets basic stuff. We did the hard stuff. Uh, anybody can run a SATA cable from the back of a drive onto a connector. And it's nothing I haven't covered many, many, many times before. So a quick shout out, and thank you for all the questions, by the way. A quick shout out to everybody who's contributed during today's stream. Uh, JK3NRWD has just contributed $10. Thank you for your contribution, JK. And really quickly, just to mention the names, <clears throat> I uh, missed one. Christopher Simons has contributed five pounds. He says, proper job done there, Kerry. Uh, cheers, Christopher. Thank you. And Niall Rutherford. Harry Baldwin has contributed 99 cents. Thank you, Harry. Paul Hoynick, Steve Caruso, Michael Dane, Michael Dane again, Leaf Belly, Jacob Alvarez, Rodrigo Vieira, Thomas Carter, Swiss Skynet, Christoph Esch, Louise Mahaya, Winston Ang Lu, Christoph Esch again, Arcade Jackpot Master, A Bloody Rage RLD3, Stephen 
Sheik, Tay London, Carl Curtin, Steve Devine, Tay London again, um, a name that doesn't appear. Somebody contributed with no message and no name. Benjamin Stroud has contributed $5. Thank you to Benjamin. Nighthawk, Greg Vibe, Dance to My Beat. Paul Eddy, Jan Giddings, Matt 92 Machine, John Craig, Richard Bogan, Sharon Idol, Josiah Guernsey, Jim Desposito, Ben DeCour, Joseph Panariello, Strandberg Tomas, John Yasudo, Harry Baldwin, Skater Man, Irish Bug, Ben Laird, Two Guns contributed one euro. I think I missed that one. Thank you to Two Guns. Jim Desposito again. Anne Ortega says, love your channel, very helpful. Thank you, Anne. Make sure she's a moderator. Sterling, Thomas Beckenstow, Nikolai Luki, Lukianov, Rick Hubbard, and the person who kicked us all off today back at 2.37 p.m., Tony Wallow. Tony, thank you, and thank to all, thanks to all of you for your generosity, your support, and for being an amazing part of this wonderful and growing community. I will see you all again. If I can over the weekend, I don't know. I can't ship this until Monday anyway, so one way or another, you'll see the finished results, just so you'll see it's all pretty when I get the cable management done. You've already got the benchmarks. It's rock solid. It does run a little bit loud for my liking. It'll quiet it down when we put the panels on. And it, it's only when the benchmark's running that the fans kick that loud. But you've got, remember, two fans here, two fans here, two fans in the graphics card we just added, a fan in the power supply, and a fan in the rear. There's no reason to add any more fans. The last thing this computer needs is more fans. What is that? Two, four, six, eight. And that's, every one of those is needed. So, well, actually, this fan here is not needed because these fans are already evacuating air out. So this fan could actually come out. You don't have to, you, you need an exhaust fan. Whether the exhaust fan is blowing out through the top or out through the back, you don't need both. So chances are if we took this rear fan out, uh, the temperature would not change at all. But this fan is also not very loud. These are the two fans that can get loud. Uh, I, oh, and I have to put the NZXT cam software on here. And there may be a firmware update to the pump itself, which can address uh, the loudness on pump fans. So that said, that's going to wrap it up today. Happy Friday to everybody. Thanks again for joining me. If you like the video, be sure and uh, hit that thumbs up button. Just uh, clicky, clicky, turn that blue. And if you like my videos, hit that red subscribe button and you'll turn the bell with those little lines on it. Hit that to make the notifications enabled so you get emailed when I'm going live. I do try to go live Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., that's GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time, minus 7. Currently, I'm an hour ahead of Pacific Time and two hours behind Eastern Time. We're going to have Daylight Saving Time coming up very soon, and then I will be on the same time as Pacific Time until the fall. And when Pacific Time falls back, Arizona does not change their clocks. So my clock is always the same. That being said, it does get a little confusing. But if you remember GMT minus 7, and you remember 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. That's my goal. Today I didn't get started till 2.30. Yesterday I didn't get started at all. On days when I'm not live, I'm trying to release like a quick tips. I'm trying to keep something going, you know. I try, but even that takes more time. But I'm doing what I can. And there should be plenty of content. If you're bored, there's over 750 videos that, you know, I'm sure there's some of them you haven't seen. Just click on my name below the video and click on the videos tab after that, and you'll see my entire video library for you to peruse at your discretion. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all again very, very soon. Until then, bye for now. See, now I have to look at all these little buttons, and I have to find the one. There it is. Mm -hmm.